This is the new DJI FPV, the latest drone that is made to bring FPV flying to everyone. Featuring a max speed of 86 miles per hour, a 4K camera, and HD streaming to goggles, the DJI FPV has a lot of people wondering, is this going to make FPV flying mainstream? We bought the DJI FPV combo along with the motion controller and the Fly More Pack so we could put it to the test as our first FPV drone. We've been flying the Mavic series for many years, but have never flown FPV before. Keep in mind that DJI did not sponsor this video. We paid full price for our drone and actually tried to be careful and learn how to operate it properly. So if you found this review helpful, be sure to subscribe and show your support. Almost 98% of people watching our videos forget to subscribe, and we post videos on new and cutting edge tech every week. Looking at the build, it resembles a hybrid between a regular drone, an FPV, and a xenomorph from Alien. The camera is on a two-axis gimbal, meaning it only stabilizes the up and down movements, but not left to right. When you fly, you'll definitely notice that fast movements, pans, and rolls can be especially quick and disorienting, which is, ideally, what you want in an FPV for precision flying. For cinematic shots, you'll need even more practice in order to get smooth movements. There's also a cruise control mode, which allows the drone to fly in a straight line. The lens is wider than previous DJI drones, giving it more of a fisheye lens. For resolution, the camera captures 4K at 60 frames per second or 1080p at 120 frames per second. For lights, there's LEDs on the back of each arm, which can be controlled and customized in the menu of the goggles to change different colors and strobes. There's another set of LEDs on the front arms, which can also be turned on and off. There's even an auxiliary downward LED light on the bottom of the drone, which is bright and can be useful for landing in unlit situations. The goggles are the version 2 of the FPV goggles from DJI that feature a new OcuSync 3.0 transmission and dual frequency 2.4 GHz and 5.8 GHz. That means that the signal from the goggles is in HD and the refresh rate is also up to 144 Hz. That makes a difference when you're flying fast and close to objects so that you can have more precision. Powering the goggles is an external battery pack, which plugs in via USB-C. While the external battery is made to reduce weight in the headset, we found that having a separate battery to worry about can be cumbersome. The goggles unfortunately don't work with traditional USB-C battery packs, but DJI says you can use 11.1 and 25.2 volt batteries that other FPVs use. But regardless, if you forget the goggle battery or even the cable, you won't be able to fly at all. And that has already happened to us once already. DJI also advertises the goggle battery should last 110 minutes, but we found ours to deplete pretty quickly in around one hour of flight time. Using the goggles, there's a set of buttons on the top right with a mini joystick, a back button, and record. The record button will record the footage inside the goggles, and there's a dedicated micro SD slot on the side. The joystick button allows you to navigate the menu settings in the goggles which is where you can check the aircraft status and change a lot of settings, such as the max altitude, return to home settings, and even control and change the colors of the LEDs on the arms of the drone. On the outside of the goggles, there's a set of LEDs that show the mode that you're flying in. For the controllers, the combo comes with a new FPV controller, which feels more like an Xbox or PS5 controller compared to the Mavic that has the phone wedged on the bottom. On top of the controller, the right side has the start-stop button, along with a camera button and a slider switch to activate the auto-fly mode. On the left side, you have the gimbal control, pause and return to home button, and the mode selector switch. You also have the option of buying the motion controller for $200. We bought it and reviewed it separately in one of our videos, so be sure to watch that next. We think it's a great addition to the FPV and a must-have accessory. Getting started. We initially began using DJI's Flight Simulator, which you install on your iPhone. And yes, I say iPhone because it's not available on Android yet, which is pretty frustrating to many users. But we did find that you can use third-party apps and even games like Lyft on Steam to get some practice. We made a separate video on that as well if you want to take a look. With the DJI Flight Simulator, you connect your iPhone to the goggles, and it works with either the regular remote or the motion controller. 
we found that the motion controller was painfully slow, and the simulator overall felt too introductory. Once you're out in the real world flying the drone, we started right off the bat with the motion controller and found it to be so fun and intuitive. In normal mode, the speed is limited to 30 miles per hour and the movements are slower, and it enables forward obstacle avoidance. It also won't let the drone go too low or fly into the ground, even if you aim the stick straight down. However, in sport mode, it's much faster and there's no obstacle avoidance, so you're flying totally under your control. This is when the fun starts to get real, and you start feeling like you're piloting a jet fighter. The only downsides to the motion controller is that you can't fly sideways, since there's no way of adding that movement with the way the joystick functions. You also can't do acrobatic moves like flips and turns that you can do with the joysticks, so it can be limiting for more advanced flying. Using the regular controller, we were able to fly in both normal and sport mode, which feels more like flying a Mavic, but at a much higher speed. In order to fly in full manual mode, you'll need to adjust the left joystick to release the tension for FPV flying. To adjust that tension, you simply pull back the plastic cover on the back of the remote and turn the screws to the right. This will cause the left stick to stay in place instead of going back to center. As beginners flying FPV for the first time, we can tell you that it's a pretty intimidating experience. If you're used to flying regular drones, the way the FPV behaves will immediately throw you off. Making turns and understanding the way you control altitude can be especially difficult. We highly recommend that other beginners take things as slow and steady as possible to avoid crashes and any other dangerous situations. Speaking of crashing, when it comes to replacing parts, the FPV has replaceable components and DJI sells each of them on their website. DJI also sells drone insurance called Refresh, which costs $200 for one year of coverage and covers two replacement drones. However, keep in mind that even with the refresh package, you still have to pay $259 for the first replacement and $279 for the second. And when you order the drone, many people might not know that you don't have to buy the full combo at $1,300. You can order just the drone for $739, goggles for $569, and controllers separately. But you'll obviously save money if you buy them in a pack. So, in the end, is the DJI FPV worth adding to your drone arsenal? Some of the advantages include being able to fly fast and start getting into FPV-style shots right out of the box. But there's also some disadvantages you should be aware of. First, the entire drone set includes a lot of different components and pieces. The drone, four little antennas, the goggles, remotes, goggle battery, and all the cables it's easy to forget something if you're not super organized, and the combo does not come with a case. The battery life is also not quite as promised. While they say 20 minutes of battery life per flight, you'll only really get that in the slower modes in ideal conditions. We only got about 10 to 12 minutes during our flights in sport and manual mode. But if you want to keep batteries charging while you're flying, we highly recommend a portable battery like this one from Rock Pals on Amazon. We were able to recharge two full batteries while we switched them out during flights, and the Rock Pals still had over 80% charge. We'll leave a link in the description of this video. Another thing to keep in mind is that flying with the goggles can also give some people motion sickness, especially when flying fast. So make sure you're aware of that. The new DJI FPV is extraordinarily fast and very noisy while flying. It's also a lot more dangerous and riskier than other drones and more prone to crashes and accidents. So make sure you don't put it in the hands of the wrong person. All right, that's it for now. Let us know what you think of the DJI FPV in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for more drone and tech videos.